Today I compare Affinity Photo to Photoshop on the iPad. Now surely with Adobe's deeper pockets and greater resources, Photoshop must be better, or at least kind of keep up. Tell you what, let's take a look at Affinity Photo and test that theory out. All right, so here I am inside Affinity Photo on the iPad. I'm looking at Live Docs. Can you see that in the top left corner? That is showing me the files that are in progress essentially. And it's a way station. If you will notice that we're seeing M's in brackets at the top of all these titles, that tells me that it, the file's been modified since I last saved it. This is such good news. And I'll tell you why. Photoshop on the iPad auto saves all the time. Whether you want it to or not, you could be experimenting inside a file, then you close out and it auto saved all over the place. This way you have control over file management, which is what you want out of a professional piece of software like this one right here, by the way. I'm going to tap on the hamburger and I could choose save if I want to to update that file. But what I want you to see, this is even more important, is I'm going to tap on this file and notice it's showing it to me in progress. I've got a selection outline that's active. When's the last time you opened up a file and there's your last use selection outline? It's totally awesome. Now I could go up to the select menu right here and choose deselect. If I have a keyboard, I can press command D by the way, which I do. Now we do have some screen display problems. See all that yellow? That's not really there. And so I could pinch like so if I want to directly on the screen, or I could press command plus, command minus, and I can spacebar drag as well. This stuff does not work inside Photoshop on the iPad because after all, you're slavishly working on the iPad. So none of that keyboard stuff should work. And then once I'm done, I would just tap out, there it is in the top left corner of the screen, see that? And I'm back at my live docs way station. And if I want to update the file, I can just use save once again. And I could be saving anywhere, not just to Adobe docs, by the way, but I could be saving the files on my iPad or to a network or to a shared folder, iCloud, it could be Dropbox, whatever. All right, I'm gonna open this guy back up just so I can point out that I drew this guy from scratch, by the way, inside Affinity Photo on the iPad. Didn't use any other software. Did it for you. And so if you want to give back to a fellow creative, just subscribe. Now, to get a sense for what's going on with the interface, you tap on this question mark, tap and hold. And then you can see the names of the tools on the left-hand side, the panels on the right. That stuff in the center refers to the icons top left and top right, by the way. And we do have the most powerful thing that you could have inside of a software like this. We have a layers panel and notice that you can collapse it as, as I have here, or you can expand it. And so you don't have to resort to two different panels awkwardly the way you do in Photoshop on the iPad. I don't even know why it works that way. Anyway, we've got these toggles right here on the right hand side that allow you to control the visibility. I'm going to twirl this guy open right here so that you can see that it has an adjustment layer. We have adjustment layers in Photoshop on the iPad. Not as many as in Affinity, but still. And these guys are expressed really well. As you can see, you have all kinds of different controls down there. This is a layer mask. If I want to see it by itself, then, and I have a keyboard, then I I would option click on this layer mask like so. But let's say you don't have a keyboard. You're, you're, you're going, you're just tablet, right? Tablet in your lap, that kind of thing. Then you tap on that triple dot icon and you click on solo. So there's all kinds of ways to get around inside the software. It's amazing how powerful it is. Very complicated as well, I have to say. So just hunt around. If you can't find something, look harder. Anyway, I'm going to hide this guy. This is a solid fill layer. Below that, we have this tree that I created using generative AI. Now, I get a lot of questions from people. It's generative AI. Does it exist inside Affinity Photo? No, it does not. And not on the, not on the desktop or on the iPad. And the truth is, if it did, it would dramatically increase the cost of the software, I would think. I don't know if Affinity has plans to do that or not, but just imagine that you have, to, it's very, very costly. Just the, the electricity, the GPUs, the whole number to run that stuff remotely. Whereas you already have tools out there that I created this guy. This is, I created it using Dolly, part of ChatGPT, OpenAI. And so notice if I tool it open, as I'm going to right here, that I have this median blur item. And I want you to see, I'm going to zoom way in so you can see if I turn that item off right there, the the artwork's very jagged. And that's because it's low res. That's the thing about generative AI. It tends to be low res right now. And so what I did was I used a median filter. This is a live 
filter, by the way, that behaves like an adjustment layer, but it's a filter once again. It doesn't and these things exist just as much inside of Affinity Photo on the iPad as they do on a desktop, just as they don't inside any version of Photoshop, regardless of how powerful. These things just aren't there. Now you can apply them to smart objects. I don't want to get into all that. They just don't exist like this. And they don't have the overhead. They're very nimble, but they're kind of weird sometimes. So we've got this radius value over here on the left-hand side of the screen. See me modifying it. And you can tap on a numerical value and dial in your own if you want to. So you have a lot of control. And then to make that go away, you would tap away from it like so. And I'm just going to click and shift click because I have a keyboard. And I can now turn any one of these on and they'll all turn on like so. All right, now one of the primary advantages to working with an iPad in the first place is that you can draw, right? Using your pressure sensitive Apple Pencil, one would assume. And so I'm going to turn these layers off again and uh, I'll select this one layer right there, ballpoint pen and turn this guy off. So you can see this is my original ballpoint pen sketch that I made. And I'm going to create a new layer by clicking on this little plus sign. Pixel layer will do just fine. And now I want you to see right over here that we have a paintbrush, which is great. It's got all kinds of sliders right there. However, here's the way I prefer to work. Up here in the context sensitive toolbar, I'll tap this guy and I'll switch to black. And then there's another circle, this guy right here, that reads 32 at this point, And that's going to bring up all the wealth of brush options. And I'm gonna take the spacing value down to like 5% so that we don't have a bunch of dollops of paint, you know, so we have smooth lines. And then notice it's not tapering at all and that's because I need to bump up the pressure. That is great more variation where the pressure is concerned. And now what I can do on this independent layer. Now I'm left-handed, so I could end up making a mess of things when I put my hand against the screen. Let's see if I do a good job. Here we go. And I could just go ahead and draw, of course. Now, Adobe does, you know, Photoshop does a fine job of this stuff. It's got brush work as well, and it, and it does great. It's not as good as Fresco, which is what I would recommend. However, these are both options. So I just want to make it clear that you do have a lot of brush control here inside of Affinity Photo. I'm not going to repaint this thing. That would be very boring. Instead, I'll just go ahead and turn this layer off and turn this one back on so you can see what I came up with where all these lines are concerned. Hey, real quick, if this were Photoshop for the iPad, we'd be done by now. But Affinity Photo has a lot going on. Non-destructive transformations, a live liquify filter that can affect multiple layers at a time, and not just undo and redo, but full on history and snapshots. For the full story, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. Now let's turn our attention to retouching, where I think Photoshop Shop on the iPad potentially has a little bit of an edge because it has content aware fill and generative fill as well. But actually, I think Affinity Photo holds up pretty darn nicely. So let's say I want to take this duck, this guy here in the background, and I, I want to move it around. And so I'm going to create a new layer right here, and it's just going to be a pixel layer. And then I'll go to the clone stamp tool or the clone brush, whatever, I don't care. Click on it again and switch to patch, which is just a better tool than it is in Photoshop, whether we're on the iPad or not. And I'm not even sure it exists on the iPad. Anyway, I'm going to select this duck right here. And then I'm going to change this guy from current layer to current layer below. So we're working non-destructively and I'll turn on this guy source mode so I can move the duck to a different location. Check that out. The patch tool is not non-destructive in Photoshop on a desktop. But also you can't do this. You can't scale the duck like so. And rotate it if you want to. This guy would let you rotate the duck around. Don't want to do that. And then I'll just move it to a different location. And if I switch to a different tool, then Photoshop is going to render that duck in place. And you can see that it is now on this independent pixel layer like so. Isn't that great? All right. Now I want to deselect the duck. So I'll go up to the selection menu. 
The menus you have to get used to and choose deselect. You also have command D if you have a keyboard. And now I'm going to click on that patch tool once again. And this time I'll switch to in painting brush, which is the closest thing to content aware inside this program. Once again, I'll switch this to current layer below. And I've got a pretty big brush going. So what I'm going to do is just paint this duck away right here. And what Affinity Photo is going to do is source from all over the image, which is what Content Aware does. Anyway, and we now have both of these ducks. Well, one move duck and one lack of duck on an entirely independent layer. All right, now let's take a look at what I think is a real sore point for a lot of Photoshop users on the iPad, and that's layer effects. And so notice, I'll go ahead and bring up the layers panel here, the drawing layer selected. So that's great. Temp FX, just a few icons down. You can see all the layer effects that are available to us, which include outline. That's the same as stroke. And we've got outer shadow, which is the same as drop shadow. And that's all you have in Photoshop on the iPad. In fact, it took them years to implement those two. We don't have any glows. We don't have any of this stuff. They're all here in, in Affinity Photo, of course. What I'm going to do is tap on 3D right here. And this should be radius. Yeah, I'm going to tank it up just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to tap on this thing right here and set it to 10. And now you can see if I zoom in, so I'll just accept that. I'll zoom in and you can see that we have these nice edges right here. Now, what I could do, you can see those highlights, right? What I could do is change the color of those highlights to a kind of shade of light green. So they match the, the green around them. And then I can tap this icon. I want to show it to you. This one allows you to duplicate the effect to create a stronger effect like so. And just like that, we have something that even survives when I'm pretty far zoomed out, as you can see right here. That's layer effect so much better here inside Affinity. All right, now for the ultimate. I'm going to go to Photoshop on the iPad for a second and see how it handles smart objects. So you create smart objects inside Photoshop proper, right, on a desktop, and then you wanna open one of these smart objects inside Photoshop. Here's the layers panel. You can see it over here on the right-hand side of the screen. This is what I mean about there's two different layers panel. There's this one and there's this one, whatever. Anyway, you can see this little thing shows it's a smart object, but if I double click on it, and each postcard is a different smart object, by the way. It's pretty simple. Smart object content cannot be edited on mobile devices. And so it's like, well, uh, all right, we'll convert then. And notice this. See how it was at an angle? Now it's no longer at an angle. And if I bring up the proper layers panel, it's now a group. And I can spin it open and check out the contents of what was formerly a smart object. Let's check out the same thing inside Affinity. So I'll go out here. Here's that same image exactly the same now the colors are brighter notice that on the postcard than they were a moment ago and that's because affinity doesn't support everything it opened the photoshop document so it can do that but that doesn't mean it's 100 percent support but i'll go over here and i will open the layers panel and and there it even says see that little icon right there indicates that it's an embedded document so if i double click on it it's going to go yeah that that's fine i can open this smart object just fine and there's the hand type down there at the bottom and there's the imagery right there and then there's the postcard in the background and so i don't know if that's sufficient egg on photoshop on the ipad's face but Affinity Photo actually does a better job with Photoshop files. Okay, to be fair, Photoshop on the iPad offers a somewhat better camera raw experience, as well as generative fill and expand. But let's face it, these are parlor tricks compared to Affinity Photo, which is a real well-crafted piece of productivity software, even on the iPad. So what do you think? Comment below. Then subscribe and turn on notifications. And for a deep dive into Affinity Photo for the iPad, join me at patreon.com slash deeknow, and then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deek Now.